this is Dr. Vicky Binias, a pediatric allergist practicing in the La Salle University Medical Center and Molino Doctors Hospital. In time of COVID-19 vaccine rollout for children 12 to 17 years old, I will be sharing with you the risk assessments for adverse events to the first dose and second dose of mRNA vaccines and the algorithm on early recognition and management of anaphylaxis developed by PSI COVID-19 Vaccine Task Force. As we all know, children are not exempted from the COVID-19 pandemic. They are at risk of contracting the disease and developing complications. As of October 13, 2021, data presented by health authorities showed that 301,163 children ages 19 and below have acquired COVID-19, with the highest deaths reported in less than four-year-old group, followed by those in 15 to 19-year-old group. It is therefore important to include children in the mass vaccination. In the Philippines, the following vaccines were granted Emergency Use Authorization or EUA and are being rolled out for adults since March 2021 and adverse events were reported as shown in this table. Let us concentrate on the mRNA vaccines, which are the Moderna and Comirnaty or Pfizer vaccine, since these are the vaccines that are being rolled out for children starting last October 15, 2021. Adverse events reported following these vaccines among adults are rare. In the Pfizer vaccine, out of 4,879,450 doses administered, 3,173 reported adverse events, comprising only of about 0.065%. While in Moderna, out of 3,580,524 doses administered, 1,517 reported adverse events, comprising only of about 0.042%. The top reported adverse events with Pfizer among adults include the following in decreasing order, elevated blood pressure, pyrexia, headache, cough, vaccination site pain, dizziness, rash, malay, nasopharyngitis, and dyspnea. With Moderna, Pyrexia, injection site pain, headache, elevated blood pressure, cough, chills, malay, nasopharyngitis, myalgia, and dizziness. Severe allergic reactions have been reported on the use of COVID-19 vaccines such as CoronaVac, AstraZeneca, Sputnik V, Comirnaty, and Janssen. And reporting rate for anaphylaxis is 5.68 per million doses administered. Since we just started rolling out mRNA vaccines for 12 to 17 years old last October 15, we do not have the data yet of adverse events. But adverse events were reported among this age group following vaccination with mRNA in other countries like the USA, Canada, and Europe. With the Pfizer vaccine, common adverse events reported include dizziness, syncope, fever, chills, myalgia, headache, fatigue, injection site pain, as well as leaf adenopathy and myocarditis occurring mostly in adolescent and young adult males presenting with chest pain, shortness of breath, palpitation, elevated troponin, and CRP. Allergic reactions including anaphylaxis, so far none were reported yet. With Moderna vaccine, common adverse events reported include fever, chills, myalgia, arthralgia, fatigue, headache, nausea, vomiting, and injection site pain, as well as axillary relief adenopathy, pericarditis, and myocarditis, likewise occurring mostly in adolescent and young adult males. Again, for allergic reactions including anaphylaxis, none were reported so far. In order to minimize the occurrence of adverse reaction, it is important to risk stratify each vaccinee before he or she is vaccinated. Beside COVID-19 Vaccine Task Force came up with this risk assessment for adverse reaction to the first dose of mRNA vaccine. It is classified into low risk, moderate risk, and high risk. 
Children assessed with low risk can proceed with the vaccination and then 30 minutes observation time. They are those who experienced non-anaphylactic allergy to oral medications, including the oral equivalent of an injectable medication, non-anaphylactic allergy to food, pet, insect venom, environmental allergens, and latex, delayed local reactions such as contact dermatitis to other vaccines, reactogenic reactions local such as pain, redness, swelling on injection site, or systemic such as fever, chills, headache, malaise to other vaccines. Those who have well-controlled atopic dermatitis, allergic rhinitis, asthma, chronic urticaria, whether on or off maintenance medications, those with primary or secondary immunodeficiency, as well as autoimmune disease and cancer, after evaluation of clinical status and discussion of benefits and risks with their attending physician, and those with family history of allergies. Children assessed with moderate risk have to take precaution to vaccination. They should be referred to a qualified specialist and be observed for at least 30 minutes in a setting fully equipped to manage severe adverse reactions. They are those who experience anaphylaxis to oral medications, food, latex, environmental allergens, or insect venom, or unclear allergen or etiology. Those who have uncontrolled asthma and mast cell disorder, wherein they have to discuss with a qualified specialist for their clinical status. Those with immediate allergic reaction of any severity, whether urticaria or anaphylaxis to other vaccines or injectable therapies, as well as those with history of myocarditis, pericarditis, and other cardiac conditions. Children with high risk are advised to avoid vaccines that contain the substance that caused their allergic reaction in the past, example, the PEG. PEG or polyethylene glycol or macrogol. Ig mediated allergic reactions and anaphylaxis to PEG in different molecular weights have been reported. They are modified lipids added to the mRNA vaccine at a molecular weight of 2,000 grams per mole to improve the aqueosolubility of the lipid nanoparticle coating the mRNA. PEGs are widely used as an additive, emulsifier, solvent, and antifreeze in household cleaning products to personal care products such as cosmetics, toothpaste, mouthwashes, shower gel, moisturizer, hand sanitizer, and soap in lower molecular weights. Food such as beer, pop-tarts, margarine, cake mix, soda, ice cream, salad dressing, and whipped cream as well as pharmaceutical products, laxatives such as Miralax, Gaviscon Double Action, eye lubricants such as Vicin Refresh eye drops, and injectable medications such as the following. Take note that methylprednisolone sodium succinate or solumedrol does not contain PEG. If a patient claimed that he or she reacted to a certain drug, food, or cosmetic product, it is best to ask for the brand and search for its components and check if it contains PEG. Let us now go to the discussion on how to recognize anaphylaxis. According to the World Allergy Organization, anaphylaxis is highly likely when any of the following two criteria is fulfilled. First criterion is acute onset of an illness, minutes to several hours, with involvement of the skin, mucosal tissue, or both, such as generalized hives, pruritus, or flushing, with or without angioedema, and at least one of the following, respiratory compromise, such as dyspnea, wheeze, stridor, and hypoxemia, circulatory compromise, such as reduced blood pressure or associated symptoms of end-organ dysfunction like hypotonia, syncope, incontinence, severe gastrointestinal symptoms such as severe crampy abdominal pain, repetitive vomiting, especially after exposure to non-food allergens. The second criterion is acute onset of hypotension or bronchospasm 
or laryngeal involvement after exposure to a known or highly probable allergen for that patient, minutes to several hours, even in the absence of typical skin involvement. Hypotension is defined as a decrease in systolic blood pressure greater than 3% from that person's baseline, or in infants and children under 10 years, systolic blood pressure less than the sum of 70 millimeters mercury and two times age in years. In adults, systolic blood pressure of less than 90 millimeters mercury. Laryngeal symptoms should include stridor, vocal changes, and or odynophagia. Sometimes anaphylaxis may be confused with immunization stress-related responses or ISRR. To differentiate the two, in terms of onset, anaphylaxis usually occurs after 5 minutes of vaccination, while in stress response, onset is usually within 5 minutes of vaccination. In terms of skin manifestations, anaphylaxis would have urticaria and or angioedema, while stress response usually manifests with pale, cold, clammy, sweaty skin. In respiratory, anaphylaxis usually presents with persistent cough, wheeze, or stridor, while in stress response, it presents more with hyperventilation. In cardiovascular, usually increased heart rate with hypotension in anaphylaxis, while variable in stress response. In gastrointestinal, nausea and vomiting associated with abdominal cramps in anaphylaxis, while nausea and vomiting only in stress response. In neurological and other symptoms, feeling of uneasiness, restlessness, agitation, loss of consciousness with little response when supine in anaphylaxis, while fearfulness, lightheadedness, dizziness, numbness, weakness, tingling around the lips, spasms enhanced in feet, and transient loss of consciousness with good response once supine in stress response. In case of doubt, serum tryptase levels may need to be performed. Serum tryptase increases from 15 minutes to 3 hours after onset of anaphylaxis with peak level at 1 to 2 hours. It is recommended to get the test within 1 to 2 hours after the reaction and repeat test 24 hours after resolution of symptoms. Positive test result supports the diagnosis of anaphylaxis, however, normal levels do not exclude anaphylaxis. Now for the treatment, the Anaphylaxis Task Force of PSI came up with this algorithm. If a patient develops generalized hives, pruritus, or flushing with or without angioedema, which are not progressing, we may only give anti-H1 orally like cetirizine, 10 mg per dose, if tolerated, but if not, diphenhydramine, at 1 mg per kilo per dose up to maximum of 50 mg per dose intramuscularly or intravenously. We may add glucocorticosteroids orally like prednisone at 1 mg per kilo to maximum of 50 to 60 mg single dose per day if tolerated, but if not tolerated, hydrocortisone IM or IV at 4 mg per kilo per dose up to maximum of 100 mg per dose, then observe for 4 hours. Discharge 4 to 8 hours after full resolution of symptoms and refer to allergy service for further evaluation. But if the skin symptoms progress in minutes to be associated with shortness of breath, wheezing, stridor, or syncope, incontinence, blood pressure drop, or swollen tongue, uvula, crampy abdominal pain, vomiting, and diarrhea, urgently administer undiluted epinephrine at a dose of 0.01 ml per kilo per dose up to maximum of 0.5 ml per dose from the 1 mg per ml ampule intramuscularly only and not for IV use. 
ideally at mid outer thigh, even through closing. Then clear the airway, administer oxygen via face mask at 8 to 10 liters per minute or up to 100% oxygen as guided by the oxygen saturation of the patient. Secure IV access with normal saline for standby IV resuscitation. Give antihistamine orally like cetirizine, if not tolerated, diphenhydramine intramuscularly or intravenously. Give hydrocortisone intramuscularly or intravenously. Continue monitor vital signs. Discharge 4 to 8 hours after full resolution of symptoms and refer to allergy service for further evaluation. But if the symptoms persist and associated with hypotension, give normal saline rapid boluses at 20 cc per kilo over 5 to 10 minutes and reassess if repeat boluses are needed. Give another dose of epinephrine. If associated with bronchospasm, give salbutamol at 100 micrograms per puff, 1 to 2 puffs every 20 minutes. If symptoms are fully resolved, discharge after 24 hours. If symptoms continue, transfer to ICU. These patients are advised not to receive the second dose of the vaccine unless cleared by allergy service. Upon discharge, the patient should be given a written instruction on how to recognize and manage a late reaction and be prescribed with EpiPen or epinephrine 1 mg per ml preparation with tuberculin syringes and 1 inch needles, anti-H1 for 2 more days, prednisone for 2 more days, and salbutamol inhaler as needed for cough and wheeze. Take note that some of the antihistamines, especially the tablet and capsule preparations, contain PEG as shown in this table. Once a patient reacted to the vaccine, we may have to ask first for any reaction to cetirizine tablet in the past. If yes or unknown, give the zero preparation of cetirizine or other antihistamine that does not contain PEG like Belastin. On the other hand, if the reaction is just an acute stress response, place the patient in a recumbent position and elevate legs above head or have the patient sit with head between their knees. Ventilate the room well and you may place cold damp cloth on the face of the patient and give reassurance. After the first dose, the vaccinees who reacted should be reassessed whether to proceed with the second dose of the vaccine. Beside COVID-19 Vaccine Task Force came up also with a risk assessment before receiving the second dose of the vaccine. Those who develop local reaction, reactogenic and vasovagal reactions may proceed with the second dose. Those with other delayed adverse reactions such as delayed cutaneous reaction, purpura thrombosis, thrombocytopenia, had to be referred to a qualified specialist for further evaluation. Those with immediate nonspecific mild reactions, such as flushing, tingling, and itching without rash, as well as those with moderate reactions, such as generalized urticaria with angioedema other than laryngeal, throat clearing, and itching and nasal symptoms should be referred to a qualified specialist to review the history of atopy and other risk factors. Those with immediate severe reactions such as anaphylaxis and other serious adverse reactions such as myocarditis should be referred to a qualified specialist and usually they are advised not to receive the second dose of the vaccine. They may receive another vaccine platform once heterologous vaccination is proven effective and safe, which they should discuss with their attending physician. This is my last slide. I hope that with all this information that I have shared with you, you are now ready to recognize anaphylaxis and be able to treat anaphylaxis accordingly.